Paul Zakopoulos. And I'm Chris Eaton. And uh, listen, we're going to do a little competitive thing for you today in a video against Amazon Redshift. And we're going to do an analogy as if we were making some healthy shakes. Uh, one based on DashDB, the other based on? Amazon Redshift. And you got it. And then you're going to kind of get all these things about the complexity and the cost. And I really think that Amazon Redshift is getting away with a lot. They're getting away with a lot of perception. Um, that just isn't true. We're going to take you through that, and then we're going to give you some links to some cheat sheets, battle cards. Uh, Chris, you made a cost calculator, uh, and we're going to blow the myth and the doors off Amazon Redshift. So stay tuned. All right, so let's kick this off with complexity. And in fact, let's talk about the complexity in Amazon Redshift versus the simplicity of Dash TV. Yeah, you know, listen, I always took it, uh, the perception for its word, for its actuality. And you hear, oh, Amazon is a simple turnkey data warehouse as a service. And uh, what made me want to look deeper, Chris, is I was with a client in New York who told me they struggled with Amazon Redshift and they were moving away from it, and that's why they called us, uh, is because it required very deep Linux skills and hands-on administration. And that kind of caught me off guard. And as I looked at it, you started to see things like it couldn't support business rules. You had to choose a compression algorithm when you wanted to tune it. You had to vacuum the database. I don't even like vacuuming my house, Chris. So maybe you could share some of the things that you've seen. Sure. So we've got a, a full uh, in-depth analysis in the sales kit for if you want to get into the more technical details. But let me just give you a couple of examples. So the one you mentioned, vacuum. So in Amazon Redshift, you actually have to go and manage the space yourself. The DBA has to worry about how much space is being used by data, how much space is being used by deleted records or drop tables, and they have to go and manually clean all that stuff up. DashDB has that all automated for you. It's automatic space reclamation. You delete a row, it, it, it cleans up for you. It's like if someone came into your house while you slept and just took out the garbage and all the recycling for you, and you came out and everything was clean, right? It'd be a little creepy, but... More like a hotel. Hotel, okay, we'll that one. <laughs> okay, the second one is uh, the, the part about uh, business rules. So in Amazon Redshift, they don't have the ability to enforce what are called unique constraints or primary keys. Right. Don't worry about that stuff. It's really the ability for uh, a value in the database to be unique. For example, a bank account or your uh, frequent flyer loyalty program. That's a unique number to you. Yeah. And if I have two people with the same number, well, now what happens when I want to redeem the points or, that are actually on your account? Maybe I could do that. That would be actually pretty good for me since you travel so much. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But how do you solve for that? So what, what Amazon Redshift forces people to do is push that logic of making sure they're all unique into the ETL tool or into the application. So the application developers have more work or someone in uh, DBA doing the ETL processing has to verify all this before it gets into the database. Right. I, I think I've heard enough. I think I have the perfect way for you to mix a drink and represent the complexity of Amazon, it seems to take elbow grease for DBAs, for data engineers, and those kinds of things for to maintain the data quality, to get the data in there, to maintain performance. You know, back when I was a kid and I used to have to mix things, uh, I would use just the bowl and some good old fashioned elbow grease with a whisk. And we'll let that represent Amazon. Manual Redshift. processing. Very manual processing. Yeah. Now, let's contrast that with DashDB. DashDB, we say it load and go. DashDB, quite frankly, is more about what you don't need to know or what you need to forget if you're a DBA and what you never need to even learn if you're not, which is more the point. And so I'm going to mix my shape with DashDB using this magic bullet. This magic bullet's pretty cool. You can see it doesn't have any knobs. There's no really tuning. I would just take my drink uh, and I would just push down. And that is so simple, I, anybody can do it. That's complexity. Amazon Redshift, DashDB. Okay, Paul, so now let's talk about advanced capabilities in Dash TV. You know, columnar databases, aren't they new? Isn't that the newest thing? Yeah, they sound it. Columnar database has been around for a long time, Chris, as you know. Uh, and we should really title this segment Old School versus the New School. So, uh, you know, when you look at Dash TV, it's very modern, right? It is columnar, but it's in memory columnar. And it's built from the ground up to exploit memory allocations, even in the CPU. That's what makes it so superior to SAP HANA. It's the leading technology in the market, Chris. And to give you an example, it actually understands, right, to keep the data in the, in the processor versus putting it on RAM, because that processor is like an F-14 fighter jet compared to a Cheetah running in RAM. So it's columnar organized. It can also support rows, but it's taking advantage of in-memory, and that's very modern. If I look at Amazon Redshift, 
It's really a fork of Paracel engine from a number of years ago. What say is, is we've added into DashDB the in-memory analytics and the in-database yeah, analytics the, the from, from the TISA. So we've got taking the work from the application and pushing it down inside the database. So we're getting the advantage of running all this process on the data while it's still compressed, and that gives us huge performance benefits. That's right, and that's a great point, Chris. Uh, if I want to order data, I don't have to decompress it to go order it. Those are the kinds of things that you get in DashDB. So, we need to put something in the Dash DB drink that is very ultra modern and efficient delivery. What do you have in mind? I think, well, Paul, your uh, your favorite. Uh, oh, I got some protein, protein powder, powder here. Look, I get uh, in one serving. I'm going to get 40 grams of protein with 100 uh, calories. This is even flavored uh, cookies and cream. I, you just can't go wrong here. So here's an advanced formula uh, for my Dash DB drink. Really efficient delivery of protein. Uh, Chris, how are you going to deliver protein in your traditional Amazon Redshift? Well, oh, I'm going to get a lot of protein, Paul, here. I've got the old school. Uh, oh. it's, it's liver sausage. And it definitely has is packed with protein. Yes, it is. It's uh, and smells too. Uh, this is uh, some liver, liver sausage. Taste. Liver paste. There we go. That's lots of protein. Okay. It's old school uh, protein, but it's protein. Okay, so we've got old school and the new school. We've got not complex, and you're gonna have to whip that somehow into a liquid. <laughs> but we'll do that in the next segment. All right, so let's talk about cloud, Paul. Amazon Redshift is cloud. You can't deny it's super cloud. Well, you know, listen, we've talked about some of the weaknesses of Amazon Redshift as the product is out there, but we'll give them some credit. They were probably first market movers. I would say now the market is actually saturated, um, although very differentiated with uh, data warehousing in the cloud and those types of things. Um, but to run on the cloud, I think you want to be fluid. I think all of our clients are talking about it. IBM is very focused on it. So I'm going to put cloud into my drink. And I think I'm going to use this milk uh, as some cloud. So I'll just pour that in there. So there's my cloud in my DashDB database. And uh, I guess Amazon runs in the cloud, right? Well, I got all cloud. Also. All, all cloud, cloud all the time. I'm right? extra, I think. All right, that's uh, really bringing the flavor oh, smells out of that oh, liver. I was going to say, I don't. I hope this isn't what the cloud smells like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, my clients also are on premise, Chris. And clients today, well, some are going to be born naturally in the cloud and Dash DB, they'll just see a four cloud service and that's all they'll ever know. At the end of the day, it's just the JDBC or ODBC connection to an application in the cloud. Uh, but a lot of my clients, they're looking at a hybrid model. They want to burst from ground to cloud and want to leverage the API and the tooling frameworks and the data and the masking agents and those kinds of things. So it's very seamless and, and harmonious. And so I have some mixed berries that represent kind of my on-premise and I have some different kinds of berries. I'm going to throw that into my uh, cloud. You can see how that just mixes in there, Chris. Um, do you want to add some on-premise to Amazon? No, we're just on cloud, Paul. No berries. You don't like berries? I'm uh, berry intolerant. Oh, okay. I'm berry intolerant. <laughs> All right. So here we have a kind of easier to make so far, more advanced and richer in terms of on-premise and on-cloud drink. And Chris, you have milk and some liver paste. Yummy. All right, let's talk about cost coming up next. All right, now let's talk about costs. You have to admit, Paul, Amazon Redshift is, has the perception as the low cost offering. Yeah, and then once again, you know what? About being a challenger seller is about teaching your clients about stuff. Uh, and I find that clients love to learn when they've had the wool pulled over their eyes. So I start with DashDB. It's actually a lot cheaper than you think. First, you pay by the month. Yep. Okay. Uh, second, you can get started for free. Um, and then you can go into a one terabyte plan, which is what, 1,000K a month. So I can use cinnamon. Um, and, you know, we always have to pay for something. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there. There's a 1,000. That's a one terabyte. Look, if I want to go to four terabytes, I, I bring that up to 4K a month. And if I want to go to MPP, well, I just had to add a little more and I go to 5K a month. So, you know, we're going to add some flavor there. We've got to pay for value. Uh, it's fair uh, and it's pretty inexpensive. I'm going to hand the costs over to you, Chris. I want you to talk about Amazon Redshift. Okay, well, the cost of Amazon Redshift looks cheap uh, on, at, on the covers, right? They've got a pretty low cost start. So let's put that same amount you put in. Oh, but wait, Amazon Redshift costs don't include support. So oh. I have to add in support okay. costs. Dash DB, the cost includes support. So let's put in the uh, wow. amount for support. What else? Well, 
<laughs> they'll give you a discount, but you got to pay all up front. Well, put so that in there. You got to pay all up front, so let's put, put a lot up front in there. I got to put you my gotta put all the payments every, every month, month up front. Yeah, that's right. If you want the discount, you pay up front. That's right. Now they also, when the, when you're doing a comparison, you can use the the uh, calculator we have. Yeah. But it shows you the number of processors they have. They call them virtual CPUs, which means it's actually just half a CPU. So you actually get less for your money than you would with with Dash DB. So I got to double. My, uh, my allotment here because you're paying for half the capacity. So let me put in double. That's kind of sneaky, isn't it? And then all up front. So let's put it all up front. I don't know. I've never done the cinnamon challenge, but this is looking uh, a lot cinnamony. Well, that's a word. I, I don't know who's drinking that, but uh, I <laughs> guess you're, you're the redshift guy. So, uh, <laughs> we'll flip a coin. Anyway, so, you know, some significant hidden costs. I could, Chris mentioned it. Go check out the cost calculator. He's been working on that for a bit. It's really going to bring clarity to the true price of the Amazon solution. But more so, Chris, all the things that we've covered in this video are going to have you educate your client on things they didn't think about and things they didn't know. And that's going to change the sale. All right, let's mix these up. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, uh, we have come to that moment, Chris, where we're going to mix the ingredients of these solutions. Maybe you could show the camera what, I don't know we, got, if it's gonna show, but what we got going don't, on here. Don't, don't drop it. <laughs> This is going to take a lot right. of manual effort. Why don't you get started. started there, mix that up, try not to on. get it on your uh, Under Armour shirt. They're brand new partners of IBM, the Cognitive Technology, if you didn't hear about it. And I'm going to mix mine up. Here we go. We got a little spinner spinner. How's that going for you? Alright, I am done. My shake It's looking pretty good. I'm just... Chris, you keep working at that. I need a little more time. Oh, you do? Okay, I'll just let that sit there. I'm getting there. All right, that looks pretty good, Chris. I might need more cloud. Do you want some more cloud? A little thick. Well, Chris, uh, there's some more cloud, and uh, of course, if you get more cloud, that's a little more expensive. Ah, no. Okay, there you go. All right, so Chris, I have this. Uh, usually, I reserve this for margaritas at my house in the summer, but maybe you could pour your drink in there. That smells delicious. Let's see that. Now, they're both solutions. They both can do the job. Why don't you open up the hood and see what's inside? So uh, this is why I don't tell my kids what's in the food I give them. Right? That's right. So we're gonna do a taste test. Wait, 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 wait! I think we should flip a coin to see who's gonna drink which one. Well, uh, I'm gonna drink the Dash no, TV. No, I think we should. But I covered Dash TV. <laughs> All right. So this is live, folks. I just want to make sure you don't have a two-headed coin. Okay. Ready? Uh, that coin looked pretty I'll thick. It. I'll flip it. You catch it. I'll call it heads. Heads, heads it is. It is. Awesome. I guess I get. All right. Start. So I'm gonna drink this. Ah, uh, Chris, you take together two coins. I didn't know you were going to do this. This is a double-headed coin, but I'm going to live up to my commitment. Uh, Chris? That's the best 50 cents I ever paid. So, uh, I have cinnamon, milk, and liver paste. Here you go. You try yours first. Hmm. It's good. <laughs> you try yours. <laughs> Is it good? It's not what you think it is, Chris. <laughs> you gotta cut that. Oh my God. All right, we're back from a, a small break that was needed for one of us at least. Uh, but let's just summarize, right? This is about complex versus easy. This is about old technology versus modern memory optimized technology. This is about cloud only versus harmonized hybrid ground to cloud. This is about way more expensive than advertised to way less expensive than you thought. And that's the story about DashDB versus Amazon Redshift. So Chris, I have one question for you. What shake are we going to make next? How about an Oracle shake? Um, thinking of those ingredients, we'll get to it next quarter. <laughs>